So after an hour of riding, yeah, we've gotten some. Like, yeah, this is definitely a lot different of an experience than the berms. Oh yeah, because the, the you don't this is a lot faster. Uh, the berms do a lot of work for turning, making turning happen. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is is just line up for the berm, and it'll bring you through the corner. Whereas this, you really have to spot your line and... Avoid the potholes. Yeah, and then lean and into it. Which is fun. It, it, it gives you a sense of how the mechanism works. As opposed to just trying to keep your line and hold, <laughs> hold on to all the speed that you're, you're carrying. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, in really, I'm actually really impressed with the improvements to the colt since the last time I rode it. It actually turns. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, we got the tire pressure and the, the angle right, so it actually carries speed and maintains the momentum. And the foot straps are where they need to be. Mm -hmm. It is still the slowest wheel by a good margin. So right now the fastest wheel is the uh, Ground Industries Crosshair, which is no which has been not able not let's see it's been not made for years now right yeah, discontinued um then we got the mbs and um and then the cheap mbs the ones that come with all their kids boards this tread which is the by far the slowest and it's odd just how slow it feels you'd think tread pattern and diameter would have a bigger effect on on speed but it it feels significantly slower like it's just dragging mm. and as far as the op yeah so trucks. the main difference between this board and this board as far as geometry goes they're really really similar uh, this one just has a little bit more turning, you know, a little bit more angle jump on the on the nose and tail. Uh, but the biggest difference is in the resistance, which is incredible if you're carrying speed. It is it is really stable at speed, and it doesn't get upset by bumps and obstacles. It'll it'll hit things, and then. It's back. Stabilize yeah. And not get completely shot offline. It'll bump your feet around, but because it's got nice wide foot platform, it uh, gives you somewhere to. Yeah, you still manage to kind of hang on to it. Yeah. But it definitely it fights back if you're trying to turn hard mm. at, at lower speed. Yeah. Whereas with this this one, on the other hand, just will turn too much at low speed and break traction. But mm -hmm. because it'll break traction, because you dove too hard into a turn, you can turn hard the other direction and catch yourself with it. And when I was at the uh, doing the berms, I actually found I was doing that and scrubbing off speed on this narrow little trail. Yeah. And you saw when I did, like, I was behind you and you were on this thing, uh -huh. and you're probably, you're probably expecting me to just like be up on your tail, and I was like, I was like falling back. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really interesting. For as large as it looks, 
it's surprisingly agile. Mm -hmm. Which is so crazy to me because these two boards, apples to apples, have the same geometry, mm -hmm. but they ride completely different and are capable in different ways. Okay, uh, another question. How do you feel about the one piece board versus the stringer board design when riding? Oh, I'm so torn because I see so much advantage in construction this way. It just makes it so convenient to press up the stringer and do the foot platform separately. But I feel like there's a lot of flex happening here. There is. There is for sure flex. And I, I don't know if it's the sound, because I'll hear it strain and make noise. A lot, and then I most, of, most of that noise is the, um, I'll show you what that is. Uh, that's the bands. <sighs> so this band, it's, it's centered on the axle, but where it's going into, into the base plate isn't centered. And so it rubs on the cam, oh. on the side of the cam. Okay. And then it kind of, because they're both 3D printed, they've got the layer lines, and so it'll kind of hop and grab a little bit as you're doing these big turns, and it'll, it'll like... And it, I'm it's... sure that when you're side-loading it really hard and putting a bunch of torque on these base plates, it probably amplifies it even more. Yeah. So anyway, because, it, because I feel the deck flexing, and because I get this audible sound of squeaking when I'm trying to turn, I immediately back off my, my turning. Like I, I just can't Mental, yeah, mentally yeah. continue to drive the, the rail when I hear it squeaking and feel it flexing. Yeah. Because so, I don't want it to break underneath me. So, th <sighs> so it's, it's like a mental thing. That well, ha most of the sound is this, but there is a significant amount of sound coming from the screws. Mm. Yeah, there's something going on. It, yeah. just, it doesn't feel homogenous. It, yeah, that's per that's the per yeah that's the perfect description because yeah. So, I mean, it's like I want to pursue this just because it 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 uh, accelerates the rate at which we can make these decks at. But As aside from that aspect, but just just as far as like the form of oh, using yeah. it. It's, yeah. Do you, do you like like do you like, like how do you like is. carrying that one more than this one? Do you do you like do you feel like you want there to be board here ever, and there's not? Yeah, only because I I'll, I'll I'll just jump on a board and put my feet wherever, and, and then you kind of reassess, right? Yeah. Whereas this one, I'm limited to where I can put my feet, which is fine because it forces me to consciously place my feet where I need to be to, to ride, but sometimes it's just nice to, especially if there's binding, having real estate without yeah to put your feet when you're not in the bindings and you're just kind of riding real low angle mellow stuff, you know, it's, I don't need to be in the bindings, I don't need to be in the aggressive stance, I just need to put my feet somewhere that I can stand on the board and maneuver around. So it, I, I see value in there being a deck platform. Okay. But, I mean, it depends on what we're going for. I mean, if, if we're just trying to, if we're just making test sleds to... Well, I mean, the, the question, the, re the reason I pose the question is a lot of people have, have actually expressed interest in this as like they're interested in that design. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got nothing against it. Yeah. In fact, I kind of like having, like, just like this has the hourglass cut out. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere I can kind of put my foot to push the board around. Because a lot of times, you know, you're up on the hill and you're trying to manage your, your gloves, you're trying to find a, a level enough spot and having that, that spot in there, I mean, you can hook it with the back of your heel kind of maneuver the board around and position it before you jump right onto it. So having this this notch is somewhere you hook your foot in to keep the board from running away from you 
while you're on the hill getting ready to jump on it is probably what I've used it for some <laughs> more so than anything. Mm -hmm. So I guess the next thing to talk about would be the, the bindings. So these these neither of these boards have the bindings. How do you feel that's working out? And what should the next what would you like to see pursued? I mean it's funny because on this grass stuff the, having no bindings is ideal because that's the that's the the dream right is just to be able to surf the grass yeah <laughs> and you can you can just jump on it and feel the trucks working and navigate around where you want to go and find the line that you want to be on and the bindings are just an extra thing to negotiate with as you're trying to get on the board while you're on a hill you know there's nothing to jump you know there's nothing to get air off of there's there's mm -hmm. no abrupt I mean, rises or there's the playground but i don't know <laughs> so it's to me i don't necessarily want bindings do this but after having spent some time yesterday at, at the berms at the yeah berms, where it had rollers and it had you know jumps that I couldn't get enough speed to, to do anything with but you know you roll up this thing and it tables out and then drops off and there's a point where the front wheel is almost airborne because mm -hmm. it goes down the face of the uh, of the landing, where the front or the rear wheel hasn't hasn't reached that point, so you, the whole front of the board feels like it drops off, and mm. without the bindings, you you really lose a sense of where your board is on your feet. Yeah, you, you feel very disconnected. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're trying to prepare for the next berm that's coming up, and you don't even feel like your foot. You feel like your front foot's floating out in space somewhere. And mm. that is where I see a really simple binding having the most. Mm. And you're depth. saying that even after, I mean, <laughs> that's even with these giant fenders. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. When when you're going up and the board's going down, yeah. you're, you're, there's nothing you can do to keep that sense of yeah. security yeah, but on the, like on the deck, like it was even worse in a lot more situations without the uh, without the fenders. And the, and this was this was good, clean, smooth, you know, not super high speed trail. Mm -hmm. And I'd say that with some more practice and a little higher speed, we could be getting air off of those jumps. And at that point, it, you'd have to have bindings. Okay, so on the jump run, I never took the jump run to past the second jump. Okay. Uh, would you take? And but you went the whole way with the Colt. Yeah. Would you I, take either? Would you take either of these other ones without bindings down the down the mellowest side? No, because it's you. You you're just too disconnected. I'm just too disconnected. And the other the other side of it is I, I was actually jumping a little bit. Like I was getting a little bit of air mm -hmm. with with the Colt, and it made me realize that I'm getting air not just because of the shape and speed that I of the of the jump but because I was using the binding you're using the binding yeah to get the jump so as I would come up the face of the jump I would preload and then start jumping away at the lip and get a little bit of air so if I was trying to do that without bindings it wouldn't work because <laughs> I can't jump before the lip which is how you get air on a bike without without the bindings so so okay. and once you're in the air you need something to keep the board stuck to your feet so you can mm -hmm. maneuver in the air to find where your landing's at yeah and uh but I still think 
sky hooks could accomplish all of those things. Yeah. I mean, I, when I say bindings, you know, this is our this is what we have in an example, but I think I think sky hooks could could function very well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd say if it got really rough and we were really doing jumps, then you know you would want a full-blown binding. But if if you're just charging through berms and going through rollers, sky hooks could could really make a difference, especially on a on a truck that could work without bindings. I think mm -hmm. to to me that that's that's the real objective is is to make a setup that doesn't require bindings but is just enhanced because it keeps your foot from flying off the deck. I mean that's when it gets rough. This is already pretty close to that because I feel like oh so this turns this turns good. more without bindings and this does with bindings while at the same time it tackles the straight lines. So what does that mean if we put bindings on this thing right now? I mean, and you ha it, it gave you the leverage to really drive the thing over. It's funny, I haven't even thought about that until right now, just because I've eliminated bindings. To, to yeah, it. so let's, I'll put the Ground Industries bindings on them next and we'll see what that does. That would be a worthwhile experiment. Because I think that's all it needs to overcome the, the resistance. Because it's, it's such a, Catch 22, it rides so well mm -hmm. in a straight line. It's so stable, it's so comfortable, it's confidence inspiring. It lets you it lets you point the nose down the fall line and just let it rip. Cause you you don't feel like it's just gonna catch a a hole and get tossed off line. It it's gonna stay the course with you on it. Mm -hmm. But if you wanna make quick direction changes you really have to plant either your heel or your toe and drive it and you don't get the, the quality reward of of feeling the board turn underneath you like you do on the, on this one yeah this one you can really ankle steer it and it, it'll go in that direction whether <laughs> whether you're prepared or not yeah it's, it's going that way <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, bindings on this board would probably be a, a decent next step. Yeah. And 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 then I think we should put sky hooks on this one. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Or or set it up so you could do both. I, I mean, because when I was riding that freeboard a little bit yesterday, there was times where you're really torquing. Uh, yeah, and it made me realize like. Well, one, it hurt, and I was like, ooh, man, that dug into my foot pretty good. But at the same time, it was also, it made me realize how necessary it is that it be that rigid mm -hmm. to be able to transfer energy from the top of my foot to the deck. Mm. And if, it, if it's too compliant, it'll deform out of the way. And it, it might keep my feet on the board, but I, it's not going to let me really drive the board around from without having a lot of contact on the on on the sole of my of my shoe i, I have no idea how it's going to work but i envision <laughs> this hybrid because it, when i'm bumping things and i feel the board being interrupted i, I want something rigid for my foot to prevent getting slid forward on Mm -hmm. And I also, I, I just want a little bit of rigidity over the top of my foot. Because that, when I, when I lean really hard, I, I want something really hard to push against. But at the same time, as it gets further away from that vertical point, I, I see it being flexible so that if I try to bail or I, I hit something and it twists my foot, I, I don't want it to be so rigid that it, you know, digs into my foot or causes an injury. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just thinking of those like spatulas, you know, the flexi flexible spatulas. Yeah, you know, it's got a hard, it's got a hard, rigid um, handle that extends into the silicone, and the silicone tapers down so that it can really squeegee out. Uh, you <laughs> so know. you want to squeegee your foot off, right? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's rigid in the core and right and where I need to be able to apply the most torque. But there's structure there to to help distribute the load. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I, that's how I imagine it. But I think the easiest thing to do is just make it as big and rigid as possible, and then pare it down as as we evolve it. Because it, it's easier to remove material than it is to add it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, bindings, and sky hooks, and then. I think we just need to go online and try to find a file that somebody's made for skyhooks and just start printing them and start the evolution of the skyhooks to... I guess we need to come up with a, a new word and to avoid the patent <laughs> pending. What? I don't know. I don't know if that's their term or if that's a community term. Oh, okay. Or maybe we just made it up. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Because <laughs> they're not quite foot straps. They're not quite toe straps. Mm -hmm. They're definitely not heel straps. And they're not bindings. Yeah, but skyhook is a is a pretty pretty good term for it. Mm. But anyway, I I, I see that. It's just funny. I'm revisiting some of the original concepts that I remember from when all this started. And building a board that didn't require bindings to turn is is what I thought was the first step, and I feel like we've we've accomplished that first milestone. So now we're able to build off of that and start introducing bindings to increase the ability to ride under uh, more difficult terrain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say we've made some huge improvements. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what we can do with this and what findings can do to the next next phase of development. But anyway, this is longboard technology over and out. All right.